1958, Madame Callas was interviewed by Edward R. Morrow at her suite at the Waldorf in New York. Uh, Madame Callas, uh, much has been said and written about your temperament. What do you have to say? Are, are you really temperamental? What do you mean by temperamental, Mr. Morrow? I quite haven't understood. Uh... Well, I, I suppose uh, tantrums, throwing things, oh, screaming. Dear. I have never thrown anything at anyone, <laughs> though sometimes you feel like it. No, tantrums. It's not even true. It's just certain situations that uh, turn up, you know nothing about it, and you just react as any normal human being. But Callus was not just any normal human being. In that same year, 1958, she walked out on the Rome Opera, was barred from appearing at La Scala in Milan, broke up with her husband, began an affair with Aristotle Onassis, and was fired from New York's Metropolitan Opera by its director, Rudolf Bing. There came the point where I had to decide, now is Madame Callas running the Met or am I running the Met? And at that time, I was still running the Met and said so, and canceled our agreement. So you really did fire Maria Callas from the Metropolitan? If you want to use that ugly word, that is so, yes. Callis was again on CBS with Ed Murrow when the famous British conductor, Sir Thomas Beecham, asked her about the firing. Can I ask Madame Callis a most important question? Please do. It's agitating all the social circles of London, and rumors, and rumors are flying around about it. It concerns the little disagreement that is supposed to have taken place between Madame Callas uh, and a misguided director of opera in New York. Oh. Now, one of the most startling rumors is uh. that Miss Madame Callas is supposed to have hit the gentleman on the head with a bottle of brandy. And I want to know <laughs> if that's true or not. The newspapers have written so much, and so much, God only knows. I would advise whoever reads those newspapers not to believe either the half of the half. But I don't believe anything, because when I read it, I have the shocks of my life. <laughs> but was it a bottle of something else, madam? But I never threw anything at anyone. Unfortunately, I wish you I never did. did. It would be a shame for the bottle, you know, really. Fifteen years later, in November of 1973, a very different Maria Callas met Mike Wallace in her apartment in Paris for a rare interview on 60 Minutes. Madam Callas, why is it that the world of opera is so passionate, so fraught with jealousy and drama. Uh, isn't uh, every field that way? No. Oh, I'm sure, yes. Look, your whole life has been constructed. Given that superb voice, the rest of it, professionally, has been constructed on drama. Ah, uh, well, maybe the other people make drama. Well, What's the drama? Well, you know as well as I. What? It's, it's, it's uh, walkouts and sicknesses and affairs and anger and jealousy and watch the drama. Have you ever walked out on your work? I'm sure you have. Furious one day. Well, I've, yes, but... Only you're not in the newspaper. That's correct. Now... Anger, uh, if you don't get angry sometimes, even not really, essentially, you never obtain the results. During performances, if I really didn't get angry and they were not afraid, the other people would not work more than the necessary. You mean they're afraid of you? Afraid? Yeah, yes. Afraid, afraid of, of what? Uh, I would have to l sort of whip them with my anger. If you don't whip them into working twice as hard, either morally or by your, uh, shall we say, tantrum, which is also sometimes false, they would never be able to come at that uh, date shall we say, three, four days, as I prepared operas in three or four days, if I didn't really start uh, screaming and yelling, you wouldn't have the result. We would not have gone on stage. All right. You had not really sung in public. In public, not since 65. For eight years. No. Why? Well, one of those things, I needed a rest. Uh, I needed to detach myself also, because every now and then I think an artist has to sort of feel distant, take her distance. But eight years? Well, years go by very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, then tell me, how does it feel to sing again now after oh, eight years? Oh, very nice. I wish I was what I was 20 years ago, but nobody is what he was 20 years ago. What aren't you today that you were 20 well, years ago? Well, the acrobats and the uh, top notes as they used to be and, uh, you know, the fireworks that a young person has. When the notice is 
for instance, after Hamburg, where you opened on this new tour, when the notices are better for the personality than for the voice, is that a matter now of much concern to you, uh, Madame Callan? Well, first of all, no. Uh, first of all, I, uh, I don't really read the critics. During my full glory, I've always had bad critics. But you but yourself know that your voice is not course, what it was. The fact that I have made a career without having public relations, without have, having to bribe uh, certain newspaper men, or to build up an image of mine, that has made things more difficult. Who bribes newspaper men? Oh, many artists. No. Oh, yes. How do you mean bribe? Well, I sort of, you know, they give them uh, either an invitation or they send a certain amount of money. And I have always resented that since I was very young. You mean? Oh, yes. Operatic artists or, you know, others as well? All others as well. To have a job, you have to be nice to some person or another. Very, uh, very few persons reach the peak with no help at all but your own uh, talent. Yes, but you're not talking about help. You're talking about bribes now. Well, if the, he if the help has to come through bribery or through uh, giving yourself up to someone or this and that, it amounts to the same. Now we're being technical. You've said, I need to be constantly boosted because I am a born pessimist. That is true. Really? That is true. And you need somebody always puffing you up. Yes, because uh, my, my, the, 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 the weapon that is against me is exactly that. Huh. Whatever I do is never good enough. A perfectionist. Perfectionist, unfortunately. And perfectionists are miserable to live with. Mm -hmm. That is true. Are you a lonely person? Uh, not really. We have to be alone. I, I feel the necessity to be alone frequently. It's our work. I don't fear loneliness, because I'm never alone. I have friends, I have, uh, I have my own interior world that uh, I can live with myself for weeks. I don't need other people. But I know that other people are willing to, uh, to be with me when I want. So I'm not really alone. Obviously, you've had a great success in your professional life. Your private life has not perhaps been as successful, no? No. No. Why? Why? Well, why? Probably uh, I became a bit too famous for my own good. And uh, while I... Maybe also I put men on a pedestal. Who? Oh, well, for instance, my husband, he wanted so much that I be la divina. For instance, he was taking things on, out on people as he was nothing special. If your husband was nothing special, why did you marry him in the first place? He was a good person, I thought. And uh, if you have a per as my home family was not, um, with my mother, I was not well off, and I was alone, and I felt that this person really loved me. Mm. But uh, I'm afraid that he loved uh, what I represented. It was a very unfortunate uh, episode of my life that I prefer not to discuss because... You are quoted as saying that your fear has always been to live your old age in poverty. No, nope, I've never said that. Misquotation. Misquotation. You know, you talk about uh, misquotation, uh, Madame Callas. One of the most famous of uh, the quotations, and I, I suppose it's a misquotation, or maybe not. No, I have the courage to tell you if it's not. All right, all right. It, and that has to do with your mother. You said, mother can go to work, she is young enough, because... No, I never said that. You did not say that? No. Certain people, uh, dishonest people, took advantage of her uh, battle against me, to uh, be put in the newspapers or to have her print stories and they would gain money. She claimed, of course, that there was no money, that she needed money and that you refused, refused to Because at a certain moment, uh, she used blackmail, unfortunately. And I don't like blackmail by anybody. How do you mean blackmail? Well, I mean, she says, you either give me this and that and that, or otherwise I'll plaster you against all the newspapers. And uh, that she did. There's no use <laughs> in seeing each other and being false when they're... I don't think that blood really ties you that much. I think I have good friends that are, have helped me mm. more than my mother. But the fact is that, that your father, your mother, and your sister somehow have left your life along the way. Shall we say uh, we frankly did not uh, agree too much. They had a way of living that was not my way. Your, your country, you saw fit in 1966 
to... My country? To discard your U.S. citizenship. Yes, uh, on account of my husband, because he was always, um, uh, you know, the, uh, giving me a lawsuit because I was with Onassis, or I was with one man or another man. Onassis didn't no. keep you from being a normal human being. And then with Mr. Onassis, we had a wonderful life. Uh... I don't re regret every bit of it. I do regret when I stopped singing. You stopped singing because of well, him? Well, no. I worked less and less because uh, evidently he did not like uh, me to sing. If a person is in love, he does not want to see, to see you on stage. That is uh, comprehensible. One hears that Mr. Onassis has been very kind in advising you financially, which has made you a very rich woman. Uh, sometimes you manage to make a decision at the right moment and thing, and it happens to go well, then mm -hmm. the decision is right. But he has advised me sometimes, and things have not gone well. This is a very sumptuous place that you have here. You must be an exceedingly wealthy woman, no? Exceedingly wealthy? No. I've always said that for the rich people, I'm very poor. And for the poor people, I'm quite rich. Well, I just live with nice things that I have had, bought little by little by singing, mm -hmm. because I have earned a fortune little fortune, not that much, because we singers don't earn the money that Frank Sinatra or people like that earn. We earn much less. Let's come back to Onassis. He is still a friend. Of course. And Mrs. Onassis? I have not met her yet. Why? Oh, I, I wouldn't know. You would like to? I wouldn't mind, but at this stage of game, I don't know. She Why don't you ask her? Certainly this must be a subject of some discussion between you and Mr. Onassis. You of must say to him. Not. You never say, Ari, tell me. Jackie refuses to meet me. Why? She refuses. Any regrets about the Onassis? The uh, un no, no. No regrets. Uh, what he does is his own uh, uh, privilege. But when he left, uh, did, he f did you feel that you had given... He didn't go. He didn't, he didn't go. go. We had just decided that uh, that I would resume my own life. Ah. Were you happy to see him marry Jacqueline Kennedy? Uh, I was happy to see... I would be happy to see him happy under any circumstances. And if he's happy with Jackie, I'm more than happy for him. Is he? That's not for me to say. That's only for him to say. Do you know what I think? I think you're still in love with Onassis. Well, I think in uh, some way both of us are probably are in love because we have led a beautiful life together and we, I think, both of us understand each other as nobody. But uh, the, at a certain stage, love becomes different. If, if Arionassis said, Maria, come on, just the two of us, in the oh, declining I years. I haven't even thought of that. You see, if I uh, was brought to a stage that I left him, that meant that I, uh, the deep, core of the thing, I really didn't love him anymore. Wait just a second. You had a husband. And you, I had a lover. And you had a lover. And, and that's that. You've had your husband, you've there had your lover. There are not very many men that can be near me. Why? Uh, it's a sort of a... It could be a handicap to be famous. You mean you're a man-eater? No. Okay. No. Uh, but near you, very many interested people can be there. And I have a very active mind, and I might frighten uh, real men away, too. You discarded a husband. You no longer have your lover. Well, I And your, your job is, I mean, you're, you're now professionally, yes. you're making a tour, but that is not the compelling thing that it was. And one wonders what is at the core of your life? What is at the center of your life today, Madame Callas? The center of my life is to be ha peaceful with yourself, and uh, to, do, to be able to uh, not be bored, which is already a lot. But one senses that you are searching for something. No, I don't search anymore. I'm at peace with myself and I accept myself as I am, with my uh, limits, with my advantages. And uh, now, on uh, December 2nd, I will be 50 years old and I'm proud of every minute of it. I have made the proper decisions, I have made mistakes. I've uh, he held a poker face when things uh, go sour, which is something that uh, everybody should. You have held a poker face? Yes. When has Maria Callas held a poker face? Oh, many a times. I consider myself a very, very lucky person. 
because uh, from nothing, uh, with no favors asked, I have become what the public has made me become. So that is extremely rare. One last question. Last question. On the occasion of this comeback tour of yours, one critic in Germany wrote that the world tour might turn out to be a grandiose finale, or it could turn out to be an artistic tragedy. So far, it hasn't been a tragedy. And, and you don't? Uh, I belong to the category, the difference between the uh, ancient Greeks and me is that I don't cry on tragedies uh, until they happen. If they happen, then I don't cry on the tragedies. I cope with them. So, uh, let's hope for the best. But hoping for the best could not ensure that final comeback for Maria Callas. Here at London's Festival Hall, one critic called her performance one of the saddest evenings he ever had to spend. To be honest, he wrote, her voice, a shade of what was, could not begin to answer the demands she and the music made on it. Alone, she went back to that apartment in Paris and spent her days listening to her old recordings. On the 16th of September, 1977, four years after that interview with Mike Wallace, she collapsed and died of a heart attack. Maria Callas was 53.